Welcome back to Forestry 101. Uh, today we're going to be talking about silviculture. Uh, and silviculture is the art and science of controlling the establishment, the growth, the competition, the health, uh, and really the quality of the forest uh, in order to meet specific uh, landowner management objectives. So to accomplish this, uh, we do different activities such as uh, thinning and harvesting and planting uh, to regenerate the forest. Uh, we tend the forest to make sure that the growing stock that is left in the forest uh, is of the healthiest uh, and highest quality uh, trees and the most desirable species. And so when we think about forestry, we're really thinking about controlling the species composition, the structure uh, of the forest, uh, and, and the density of the forest. And we can all do these things through silvicultural activities. So these silvicultural activities uh, are generally called treatments. Uh, and we talk about the long-term planning. These treatments uh, are set uh, in process uh, through uh, prescriptions, silvicultural prescriptions. Uh, and generally, uh, when we're developing a silvicultural prescription, uh, we're gonna define it in the context of the silvicultural system. So the silvicultural systems are named after the number of age classes uh, that will result uh, from our, our treatment, from uh, our regeneration of the forest. Uh, so the number of age classes uh, is meaningful because it tells us a lot about the structure uh, of the forest. Uh, and different structures can uh, help us meet different management objectives. The first system is an even-aged uh, silvicultural system, uh, and this uh, creates and maintains a single layer, a single cohort uh, of trees and the species generally lacking a lot of structural uh, heterogeneity and creating a more homogeneous condition uh, in the stand. Uh, we also have a two-aged system uh, where uh, this is just how it sounds. There's two age classes uh, in, uh, in the forest, so you might have an overstory uh, and then you have a regenerating uh, cohort coming up and generally these, uh, these understory uh, trees that are coming up as a second age co cohort uh, will have uh, some level of shade uh, tolerance that it can grow up underneath the shade and the canopy of, of the, uh, the overstory. Uh, and lastly, we have an uneven age system. Uh, and this is generally characterized as having a lot of stand heterogeneity, structural heterogeneity, where there's multiple age classes from the canopy, the highest trees, all the way down, uh, having mid-story and uh, understory trees. So every silvicultural system has three main components. We have regeneration, tending, and harvest. Uh, and these, these three parts work together to create and develop a stand where we're controlling uh, the species composition, the structure of the forest through different tending uh, uh, treatments, uh, and then we have some sort of uh, harvest. Uh, and those harvests uh, are, are named after, uh, after the type uh, of regeneration that might take place. Right? So we have different uh, even-aged or uneven-aged systems in the way that we harvest trees out of the forest, uh, the overstory trees will dictate the future structure uh, of the forest. So oftentimes we combine even-aged treatments and two-age treatments into uh, a general group. Uh, and within, within this system, this even-aged systems, there's three primary uh, methods for creating an even-aged forest. Uh, there's clear cutting, there's a seed tree method, uh, and there's the shelter wood method. And the clear cutting, uh, as, it, uh, as you uh, are likely aware of, is removing all of the overstory trees and then regenerating a new uh, cohort of trees. And generally these new cohort of trees uh, will be very shade intolerant. That means that they like full sunlight uh, and those species that grow best under full sunlight will be the ones uh, that um, develop in, in this new cohort. The seed tree method is another uh, silvicultural method uh, within the even-aged system, right? And so the seed tree involves uh, removing a uh, majority of the overstory except for a few high-quality trees that will be left to seed the understory. 
And generally this works best for shade intolerant species because there's gonna be a lot of open area, a lot of sunlight coming into the forest floor. And so if we leave the speed with we leave trees uh, of species that are shade tolerant, that means that those species will do best uh, when regenerating. If we have species uh, that uh, prefer the shade, uh, the seed tree method uh, would not be appropriate uh, because we're not going to get or recruit uh, the desirable uh, species that we're trying to regenerate because they can't compete with those species that uh, love uh, growing in full sunlight. Uh, and our last even aged method uh, is the shelter wood. Uh, and the shelter wood is generally comprised of three parts. Uh, there's an optional preparatory cut which uh, prepares uh, the forest uh, for, uh, for treatment. Uh, this could be tending, uh, removing some um, uh, invasive plants uh, or any, any plants or trees that are, are going to affect the quality of the growth of our new regenerating stand. Uh, then we have our establishment uh, cut, uh, which removes uh, uh, quite a bit of the overall volume of the stand, but leaves enough uh, trees that provides shelter for this new growing cohort uh, underneath uh, in, the, in the understory. We really have a, uh, what's called a selection system, and we can have single tree selection uh, and group uh, selection. When we talk about single tree selection, uh, we're identifying individual trees to remove uh, from the forest. So this is a much higher intensity uh, silvicultural method, uh, and it requires a lot of detail in going through and marking specific trees uh, to help us meet a specific uh, age uh, size structure within the forest. Uh, alternatively, we can uh, do what's called a group selection, where you're going in and identifying, ad identifying groups uh, of trees and removing those trees uh, so that it creates an opening in the forest so a new cohort of trees grows in that opening. And over time, you create multiple layers, uh, multiple openings at different time intervals, and so you'll have a different structure uh, within the forest. Uh, silviculture generally refers to uh, sound forest management uh, to meet specific management objectives. And we have a range of, of uh, forest management objectives uh, that we've talked about in the past uh, within this series of Forestry 101, whether it's related to uh, timber or wildlife uh, or water quality or, or recreation or just enjoying the general uh, aesthetic of the forest. Uh, these are all management objectives uh, and we use silvicultural activities uh, to help uh, meet those management objectives uh, and help us define a course of action uh, to help us ultimately get to where we want to be. And this is what we call a silvicultural prescription. So a silvicultural prescription is a planned series of activities uh, that takes into account uh, the inventory, the data, uh, everything that's contained within the forest, and then we uh, plan our activities based around what's currently out there and then we prescribe treatments uh, to meet uh, a future condition or a desired future condition of what we want that forest to look like in the future and we prescribe those treatments to help us get there. And so that's why it's so important uh, to have uh, your management priorities uh, well thought out prior to thinking about how to manage your, your land, right? Uh, and so if you're a woodland owner, uh, thinking about your priorities, uh, what you want out of that forest, and then you can help convey that to a forester or a silviculturist uh, that can come help you uh, yeah, articulate uh, and think about actual activities uh, to help meet those uh, objectives and, and priorities uh, within your woodland. Thanks for joining me today uh, and until next time I hope you and your woodlands stay happy and healthy. Mm -hmm.